The HTC U11 is a smartphone full of contradictions. A stunning backplate mated to a forgettable face. Quick software blunted by extraneous gimmicks. Slick multimedia features without a big battery to back them up. Even the name is fighting with itself. Awkward compromise of last year's simplicity and this year's peculiar claptrap. But despite all the flip-flopping, this is a good smartphone with some unique features. Let's see whether they're enough to make it matter in the Mr. Mobile review of the HTC U11. If I were HTC, I would try to find a way to show the U11 in stores with the backside facing out, because visually that's the only chance it has of standing out. There is zero exciting about the face here, with its big bezels and capacitive keys ported right over from last year's model. It's fine. The display is HTC's usual Super LCD 5 with a limited range of brightness and the traditional 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So if you don't like the modern trend toward stretched screens, that'll probably make you happy. Flip the phone over and you see where all of HTC's design effort went. The backplate has been coated using a process called optical spectrum hybrid deposition, which mixes refractive material into the paint job. It seems to change color depending on the angle you observe it from. That's less evident in the blue and silver review devices I've handled, but the solar red version is almost otherworldly. Yes, it's a smudge fest, just as you'd expect, which is probably why HTC dropped a protective shell in the box gratis. Also in the box, a set of earbuds. But wait, don't skip ahead, because these are actually worth your time for once. In exchange for the sin of killing off the standard headphone jack, HTC has given the earbuds acoustic noise cancelling powered by the USB Type-C port. It's not going to do as good a job at blocking background noise as a good set of over-ear headphones, but for earbuds that come in the box, these are pretty damn good. And if you're at home and want to forgo the phones, I'm excited to report that the boom is back in boom sound. And boom goes the dynamite. It's the same earpiece and bottom edge arrangement as last year, but HTC claims a 100% boost in volume and 150% boost in dynamic range over the HTC 10. And yeah, you can hear it. She called me Mr. Boombastic, very fantastic. She called me Mr. Boombastic, very fantastic. HTC also brought some of that acoustic excellence over to the camera. When you're shooting video, you not only have the outstanding high-res audio recording of generations past, but a new feature called Acoustic Focus that amplifies a subject's volume as you zoom in on it. When I first heard about Acoustic Focus, I kind of rolled my eyes. But after a week with the thing, I'm convinced it's something people will come to love. As for the rest of the camera, while it may not be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Galaxy S8 or Google Pixel in every single scenario, I never found myself longing for another phone when a photo op came along. The software is fast, the camera adaptable, with a built-in slow motion mode that's perfect for showing off your dope bowling form, or lack thereof. And since the phone is IP67 water and dust resistant, you can sneak in the occasional underwater video, if you're careful about it. Bottom line, I think the photo and video output here is going to be great for 95% of people. The remaining 5% will be able to see the dip in saturation, characteristic of HTC's HDR mode, or argue over DxO mark scores, but that's not really my bag. In fact, the only area I came away truly disappointed was in the front-facing camera. Now, it does a solid job at selfies, it's not that. It's just that it lacks the optical stabilization of the HTC 10 which was a really rare value add that HTC can no longer claim an exclusive on. So if you're the type who does a lot of walking and talking at his phone, well, it's just not going to be as good as the 10, at least not in terms of stabilization. Sorry, vloggers. I need a haircut. Maybe it was a desire for replacement features that propelled HTC to load this phone up with fluff, like edge sense. Yes, this is the phone you can squeeze, but unlike the truly useful audio features I just talked about, squeezing my phone never came to feel natural or convenient to me. Maybe if it also incorporated a jog dial gesture for scrolling, 
or let me do something handy like drop the notification shade, I'd feel differently. A software update is rumored to bring more functionality this summer. For now, it just kind of seems like a publicity stunt. Same deal with Sense Companion, which is yet another so-called smart assistant that wastes your time with obvious suggestions, usually at inconvenient times. Yes, it takes time to learn, and I'm sure it'll get better over time. It really didn't in the week I was using it. And look, it's all beside the point. The sooner manufacturers admit that Google does a better job at this stuff because of the enormous pool of data it's sitting on that manufacturers just don't have, well, the sooner those manufacturers can redirect their efforts into something other than cruft. Fortunately, there's nothing stopping you from just using Google Assistant on the U11. Or if you're more of an Amazon fan, HTC does have a little feather in its cap here. Alexa is baked in as well, and it has wake word support, so you don't even need to push a button. I kept that disabled, though, in an effort to lengthen the phone's battery life. While the U11 usually lasted me all day, they were short days, with the phone dipping below 15% shortly after dinner time, and less screen on time than I'd generally like to see, just under four hours. Now, in exchange for putting up with that, you do get the most responsive Android experience you can find without buying a Pixel. When I was really loading up the U11, I was streaming a podcast while trying to meet up with friends downtown and jumping back and forth between messaging and maps and Spotify, and the phone was just so fast it almost felt like it was one step ahead of me the whole time. Predictably, phone calls are very good, with excellent noise cancellation, probably thanks to that four-microphone array. In sum, HTC has finally filled most of the gaps and delivered a phone with almost everything we've ever asked for. But like the phone itself, I'm conflicted. There are so many great features here. The zippy software, the alluring spec sheet, the solid camera, the innovative audio features. And all that's especially great given the phone's price undercuts its high-end competition. $649, or $599 with the discount codes I'll share in a second. But the squeeze and AI gimmicks, the bizarre marketing approach, it all feels unworthy of the company that's brought us so many quietly brilliant smartphones over the past two decades. To put it more pragmatically, the U11 is a very good phone, priced reasonably well. But I expect most people will either spring for something a bit more expensive and more advanced, like the Samsung Galaxy S8, or something more affordable and almost as good, like the OnePlus 3T. If you want an HTC U11, good for you. You can buy one at a Sprint store, the only retail carrier. And if you pre-order before June 8, you'll get two Amazon Echo Dots in the deal, which is pretty cool. If you go for Unlocked, use one of these discount codes to knock 50 bucks off the price at HTC's website. I'll drop a link in the description. Let me know what you think about the U11 in the comments and subscribe for more mobile tech video every week. Till next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.